On peut, en principe, distinguer In principle, one may distinguish between the various values that constitute sustainable development and those associated with sustainable development. Regarding the economic sphere, the constituting values would be, for instance, productivity, employment or profitability. For the ecologic sphere, we're talking about biodiversity or the protection of biodiversity and the fight against climate changes. One may also include in the category of constitutive values uh, for sustainable development, those values that find themselves in an intermediate position between two spheres, as is the case for environmental justice, uh, which is uh, somewhere in between the social sphere and the ecological sphere. But what about associated values? Sustainable development is a complex and ambitious concept attempting to provide a roadmap for the world, for the entire world, and uh, also projects for the uh, Na United Nations. If we consider the size of the concept, how can we add to constituting values, associated values, without making, setting up, a, drawing up an infinite list. In order to try and answer the question, I'll talk about a few values which I believe are essential for the existence and the good functioning of sustainable development, but that cannot always be found in the uh, normal explaining uh, scheme for sustainable development. Recognition or acknowledgement. Sometimes uh, the speeches about sustainable development may become idealistic, as if it were possible to reach a harmonious development in the world in the absence of any kind of conflict between humankind and also between humankind and nature. But if we take the three spheres, economic, social and ecological, obviously there will be, and there is today, there are, sorry, conflicts between these uh, elements. People belonging to the right defend economy and its constituting values, employment, growth, etc. People from the left tend to uh, defend the social sphere, and that's why very often they're called socialists. And their constituting values such as uh, social justice, education, health, the fight against poverty, or equal opportunities between men and women. Finally, ecologists defend the ecology, the environment, and the constituting values such as uh, biodiversity, the promotion of uh, green modes of transportation, etc. Now, what we must recognize here is not just the existence of the three spheres, but also the fact that sustainable development is a kind of uh, political chessboard where everybody may take position. It is therefore absolutely essential that we acknowledge the existence and the right of expression of all these people. So that we understand the importance of recognition, we can mention a case when uh, recognition was absent. In 1987, Margaret Thatcher, who was the then Prime Minister of my country, England, said, and I quote, society does not exist. For Margaret Thatcher, there were only individuals, men and women, and families. And yet, although a uh, right-wing political uh, woman could uh, defend the family, uh, the men and the women who constitute the families, uh, denying the existence of society is a serious case of non-recognition of all those uh, who defend society and need society because they can't look after themselves alone and they can't manage with the only help of their families. Denying the existence of society was therefore in total opposition with the principle of sustainable development. The second value I'd like to mention is reflexivity, the fact that we may question sustainable development. How do we articulate together development and durability? Sustainable or durable development, is it a universal concept that can be bought into by all countries and all cultures alike across the planet? Or is it more a Western notion, which is then possibly going to be imposed on non 
Western cultures in a violent, unfair or inappropriate way? How can we take into consideration the needs of future generations considering they do not exist yet and therefore cannot express themselves? And in order to uh, achieve sustainable development, do we need to reinforce the ecological sphere and the uh, Grenelle de l'Environnement meetings considered that it was the weakest of all the spheres. And if we need to reinforce the ecological environmental uh, sphere, do we do it with a, uh, an environmental transition or do we need to increase its representation with uh, green uh, political parties, the action of which is relatively weak in Europe? And what do we think about people who oppose sustainable development, including the French economist Serge Latouche and his uh, help us who are in favor of degrowth, declining growth. Asking those questions is absolutely essential if we want to guarantee vitality, vigor, and adaptability of sustainable development. With that reflexivity, sustainable development is at risk of becoming simply a dogma, repeating a few simple principles which are taken for granted. And this may also lead to a technocratic logic, which might, yes, be simple and efficient, but probably would lose all context with the source of wisdom. Let us not forget that asking questions on sustainable development can take us elsewhere, and maybe one day we'll be able to move to new concepts and develop new ideas for the future. The third important value that I would like to discuss with you is participation. If you want my opinion, I don't believe I'm the only one to think that way. Citizen participation is absolutely essential for de sustainable development. Take, for instance, the example of daily life and uh, what we call eco-actions, responsible consumption, sorting out waste, using a bicycle rather than a, an automobile, small individual actions that allow citizens to participate in sustainable development. But there are other spheres which are not so well known and possibly are even more important. Let us take the example of uh, green technology adoption and decentralized technology adoption. In nuclear plants uh, or energy plants that use fossil fuels, there are several ways to provide uh, energy, such as uh, photovoltaic uh, cells uh, on the roofs or green roofs or urban agriculture and uh, rainwater being gathered. But that's, this means that everybody must participate. Uh, owners of houses, tenants, of farmers, and people living in buildings. Another idea is the uh, decentralized techniques, such as uh, green roofs and uh, systems to gather uh, rainwater and new forms of uh, urban architecture, agriculture, sorry. All these forms of participation, citizen participation, require political participation. If citizens become the uh, actors of change, then it would make sense for politicians to talk to them and uh, deliberate with them and take decisions with the citizens and not just on their own or in uh, con connection with only large companies, so that citizens would no longer simply be consumers of services provided by the state or private sector, but they would themselves be service providers. There are certain the other values that I might have mentioned, but rather than just uh, scrolling down a list of value, I'd like to conclude my speech with a question. What about democracy? Is democracy a constituting value for sustainable development, or is it only an associated value? And in that case, uh, who conducts the association? Just us inhabiting Western democratic countries who uh, associate democracy with sustainable development? Thank you for your attention.